All right, we're recording. This is Rogue versus Phase. This was last week. I want to say like Thursday or maybe it was Friday. Um, this was the upper bracket final of Group C, I believe, or B. It was probably B. I don't actually know, but um, Phase won this set, even though teams or everyone thought that Rogue should have beaten. Them. See, I guess as like a preface for this, you should realize that. Rogue had just gotten back from ESL, so they were traveling like for the week before this. And FaZe has been playing FaZe is actually a pretty new team. Um this is like formerly We United and a mixture of them and some other team. Um but I guess players to watch like Rogue has AKM who's like a beast on LAN. He doesn't really turn up so much online right now in this set, but his DM is really good. Wins has incredible aim. The two of these guys are brothers. Tavik is Tavik. He can play most heroes really well. Reinforce is definitely one of the better Reinhardts in EU. And Nox and Unko just pull their weight, I guess. But FaZe, um, a lot of people don't really know a lot of these players, I guess, because they're not so famous, or they're not as famous. They're like newer to the scene. But Zoms was on Liquid for a little while, and I think he, he used to pub a shit ton with Cloud9 before Cloud9 was Cloud9, like when they were Google Me. And he was like one of their ringers, I think, when Cloud9 was like looking for players to play with. Um, Rockus, I pub with him a lot. Him and Fact Fiction. Uh, Fact Fiction is really good, though, at Reinhardt. And I mean, these two are, I, th I don't know if they came from pubs. I'm not sure what game they came from. I want to say Fact Fiction from like WoW or something. But I don't know if it's WoW or some other random shooter game. Don't quote me on the wild thing. Uh, Tweezy was formerly on Wii United, or Reunited, and they replaced him with Kib. And Shadowburn is actually a legendary like TF2 soldier. Like People don't know him, and I'm surprised that they don't know him, but like he's this Russian dude, and he just actually was like one of the best soldiers in Europe. At, yeah, Europe or yeah, Eastern Europe. But he has like godlike aim on projectile classes, so like... Him being good. Oh, fact fiction from Dota. Okay, and but yeah, Shadowburn is like a soldier legend in Eastern Europe. And Forsaken, I don't know what class he played, but he, him, and Shadowburn have played TF2 together for a while. I want to say Forsaken was a scout or a another soldier. But I know Forsaken's also from TF2. Um, so yeah, these teams have a lot of gaming history behind them, probably more so than other teams in the scene. And. Yeah, so this is King's Row, and let's start the VOD because I'm not sure who's on what side. They're watching this guy. Alright, so Rogue's on defense, they're running the very standard McCree, Reaper, Zarya, nothing interesting here. Um, this lineup's pretty straightforward, very common, not much to say about it. You have your close range damage, you have your shields, you have your heals, your shield, and then you have AKM, the free player. And Faze looks like they're going to do the exact same thing on offense. So yeah, no team deviating from the meta right now. They're just kind of playing. They're just playing the normal safe watch. Okay, so generally speaking on offense, this is for like people who don't know this, I guess, because I have a lot of new viewers in here. Um, Generally speaking on King's Row, it's pretty safe to go for an all-in push right off the, at the beginning, like right at the beginning of um, the map, because if you get a pick or two, you'll get, um, you get spawn advantage. So like, if you just bum rush these points right here, if you get like one or two kills on like the Reinhardt or the Reinhardt and the Zenyatta, like two kills, then your team just stays alive or dies altogether, you'll get to this point faster than defense can just because of the spawn locations. A lot of teams play this point pretty aggressively at the start because there's no reason not to. I don't know what that flashbang was. Tweezy's a little uh, nervous here. You can They can kind of take one more fight like this. Um, there's no real pressure on them at this point because Rogue won the fight, but it was so clean that they didn't really get that much ult out of it. It looks like Reinforce hit a good fire strike because he got some really good ult charge. That's really why you need to see that Reinhardt survive. Um, on like, question about commentators, I think Uber is probably the best play-by-play -play in the game right now. Or like one of them. Like strictly play-by-play, -play, definitely one. Not wanting to throw in the 4 free ult charge, but reinforce, Ayla take out 
So Rogue's in a really good spot right now. Like winning two fights on defense is actually super, super good. Like it's very hard to push against a team that wins two fights because they get such big ult advantages. Like Reinforce has Earth Shatter right now, and Fact Fiction's only at 40%. Like they can win off of an Earth Shatter. Like Earth Shatter's probably the biggest game winning or it has the biggest potential to win a game or a fight that you shouldn't win. Like it's just such a long stun and it's so big AoE that good Earth Shatter can win you the game. So like right now Rogue is just super ahead in the ults. I guess the good news is that FaZe is gonna catch up. Um but this Earth Shatter discrepancy is pretty large. I would say almost too big to overcome in the short term. Um it looks like Wins is about to die actually. Like somehow I caught the frame rate as one health. If he dies, that's really bad. And that's actually probably game losing in some aspects. Like I would expect Unko should have saved him, or someone should have saved him here. Like he should not be getting this low. Yeah, him dying there might actually just lose them the entire fight. And it will. Because you don't want to drop Alright, so like let's talk about this too. If you're rogue right now and your Zari is dead, you really don't want to pop Transcendence because the odds of you winning a fight are super slim. Like, you have to assume that FaZe has Transcendence. So if you're going to pop Transcendence and your Zari is dead and they didn't use Black Hole yet, like, Zoms will get Black Hole if he pops Transcendence for sure. So if he pops Transcendence and then they get a Black Hole off, it's like they never even really got the Transcendence off. Like, there's actually no way for Rogue to win this fight now that Wins is dead. Um... The fact that he dies is actually really bad because if he had died, if they had popped Transcendence to save him, they probably still might have lost the fight. But maybe Wins gets his black hole off and then can bait out Forsaken's trans. But the fact that he dies first actually just loses them everything. Like there's no, you really don't want to pop ults if you're rogue and your Zarya is dead. Um, popping ults with that much DPS and sustain missing is really bad. But like this puts rogue in a really good position to hold the second checkpoint. Because now they're at like five or six ults almost. Um, whereas all FaZe had to commit there was too easy sign noon. Yeah, I don't know if that's a mistake from wins or just being out of position, but him dying there actually just destroyed. Like, they were in such a good position to possibly even full hold them there. No, if Zarya dies, your team generally just falls apart. Like, how it works, I guess. If you're in. Phase issues right now though, you kind of just want to take a fight right now to bait out these ults from Rogue. The odds of you winning a fight head on against Rogue right now are pretty slim. Generally defense has the advantage when it comes to team fights. Um not not like in not I don't know how, I don't want to explain it wrong, but like you have to initiate in general in this game. So like Rogue has six ults. You don't want to burn six ults at the same time as either team. Like that's not a thing, but it becomes a thing once one team does it. So like it becomes this really weird game of like chicken where one team is gonna like probably pop a black hole and then someone will pop trans and then since that team pops trans the other team pops trans then once the fight's over they both think to themselves like oh shit we just used our black hole and they start popping drop the beats and like this is one of the situations where the game actually just becomes a chaos like a chaotic mess which generally favors defense because if they use their alt second they'll have the better sustain from the transcendence and the drop the beat. But fights like this are actually probably the hardest to analyze and to talk about because generally speaking, there's you can't predict the outcome. It literally comes down to like one person hitting a good stun or a couple of headshots or like just random shit like that. But the alt, yeah, the alt showdowns are like everyone's just mashing their keyboards and like, oh shit, what's going on? Because they can't see anything because there's like shields in their face, Zarya bubbles in their face, um, Lucio dropped the beat, so everyone's like glowing and shit. This is like where the game just becomes crazy. But it could go in FaZe's favor, you never know. But generally speaking, you would expect it to go in Rogue's favor. Okay. What happens here? Zom's pop- Wins dies again. Why? I don't know. What, not, Wins keeps dying. Unko pops Transcendence, probably trying to save Wins, but Wins is dead. Reinforce hits Earth Shatter. It's not a bad Earth Shatter, but they traded Earth Shatters, and reinforces Earth Shatter from Black Hole. So there's not much to do. Why does this kid keep getting unbanned? This is my life right now. Um, so yeah, like he pops, he pops Earth Shatter from inside the black hole, but his Zarya is dead. 
So already the fact that Zarya died like really boned them again. I don't know why Wins keeps dying. But him dying first at the beginning of these fights is actually just destroying them. Um needs to not die here. I honestly don't like there's actually no way for them to win the fight anymore. Alright, they're actually this is this is like bad. This is like super bad. If you're rogue right now, you just dropped like they just pop dropped the beat too. But your Zarya is dead. And you fucking just dropped you Earth Shattered. So like it's kind of hard for them to win. I don't know why they dropped the beat. If you double support ult, the game is infinitely harder. Like Raucous had already dropped his. I guess he dropped it in response, so it's not the worst thing in the world because you're trading. Like as long as you're not at an ult disadvantage, like everyone's just dropping ults right now. The silver lining for Rogue is that since everyone dropped all their ults, then the black hole from wins when he gets here might be good. But his team needs to die right now because they're like staggering their deaths and it's not all for them. Yeah, they went from six ults each to like two ults each, and the carts literally moved like ten. So, yeah, I mean, that's how it works. But the good news, like, it worked out in Rogue's favor because Wins died and FaZe overcommitted. I don't think FaZe had to drop the beat at all. Um, I think that fight should have just been won by them as soon as Wins died because, like, how did they lose that fight? I don't know. They could have probably baited out Nox's ult and saved their own drop the beat, but, um, yeah. It was, I, don't, I think that they overcommitted there on FaZe. The only reason why it's not that bad for them is because they still have double DPS ult and there's no su support ults up on Rogue. So if they like speed boost into a Genji ult, not a Genji ult, a Reaper ult or a McCree ult, they can probably get some work done. But Wins really wants to use this black hole right now. Zoning high noon, not really worth it. Really bad black hole. Only caught the Reinhardt and the Reinhardt I think had full shield. Um, not sure why. Shadowburn gets cocky, tries to take a 1v1, loses. They need to back out right now on FaZe. FaZe just needs to say, like, alright, we lost, let's just get the hell out. But this is really good positioning and really good pressure from Rogue. They realize that, like, they're so far ahead and they just got those picks that they can push them all the way back to their spawn. This is where I guess it came into play that they had blown all their ults. I think Shadowburn still had his um, Dragon Blade. That was really hard to spectate. I'm not really sure what to get out of that. Reinforce dropped his ult in the front and um, he earth shattered, I think, two or three players from phase. But he didn't get Forsaken. So Forsaken dropped his Transcendence to save his teammates. But Shadowburn came in from the back and just got like a three man ulti. I guess AKM didn't have his flashbang up or wasn't in a position to see him. So AKM just gets, or not AKM, Shadowburn just gets a three man Death Blossom, and that's all she wrote. Um, it looked, it could have been a good fight for Rogue if they hadn't split up, I guess. Like, I don't know. Half their team was trying to follow up on the Earth Tower, and half the team was sitting in the back. Um, but that's just one of those times where the individual play from a DPS player can like win you the fights. There's a few times in this game where you'll think that you have the ult advantage, but it won't matter because like some player will just decide like, fuck it, I'm just going to make a play. And like that was Shadowburn's opportunity right there to just make a play. I don't know if I can do another map or another full match after this. I think this only goes to two maps, so maybe I can do one more. But... I don't know why Rogue's being really passive here. Like, TV dies because he gets cocky again. Like, he kept taking 1v1s this game, and I don't know why. He, like, thinks that he's... He's just he's playing really cocky, and it's very apparent. Like, he shouldn't be dead right now. They should have just pushed into them with Unko's ult. But him being dead makes Unko not want to use his ults. And then, like, now that they're... Like, they could have had a good combo here with, like, Dragon Blade and Drop the Beat. But instead, they're just going to drop the beat without their Genji up. And it just puts them in a really bad position. Just like, look at Shower, and Shower is just gonna go in and do whatever he wants. Because what is he afraid of? Like, nothing. The McCree's in the black hole, the Genji's not even alive. Now TV's gonna come in and, like, try to do what he can do. 
I don't know if Shadow, I don't know why Shadowburn ulted there. Maybe he wants to get off the class. Um, that was a bizarre reaper roll. Yeah, he's getting off the class. He's like, I got this. I'm going Winston. Now it's really just going to come down to the Zert Strider versus that black hole. But if you're phase right now, you don't really. They keep popping black hole when the shield is at like full health. But they just got like a five man. Did that hit anybody? I can't even tell. Alright, this was such a bizarre fight, actually. It's actually really hard to block Reinhardt ults on this ramp for some reason. I want to say that there's like a weird clipping issue where like the shield doesn't actually hit the ramp. So like you'll earth shatter and sometimes it'll go right underneath uh, Reinhardt shield. But he, that was a really good play from um, Fact Fiction. Like his whole team's in the black hole and he knows that they're charging up that high noon. So he just drops the Earth Shatter in front of them and winds up, I think, getting the McCree that was ulting because the McCree was still like waiting for the shield to go down. So it was either a really bad reaction from AKM or just a really good play from Fact Fiction, but I think Reinforce's shield either went down or it went underneath it. But that Earth Shatter just saved them from losing. Like, Reinforce ults, but it's too late because Fact... I think Fact Fiction used his at the same time as Reinforce, but... Fact Fiction's got off earlier, and it stopped the high noon, and then it opened up Weezy to be able to be able to kill AKM. That was like a really bizarre timing, just paying dividends. And that's like where the volatility in this game comes, like where teams can just beat other teams randomly. It's because it, all it takes is like one or two really, I don't want to say lucky, but fortunate plays, and you can you can get a really good time. And this is a pretty good time from FaZe if they finish right here. Yeah, Fact Fiction is just plowing right now. Like, he's just swinging. He has ult again. He just got his ult up, and he has it again. Like, he hit a few swings on that shatter. Oh, he flashbanged him. Tweezy flashbanged him, it looked like. Talking about it after the game. For a moment there, I thought that, that was a mistake. I mean, if you saw Tim I guess he flashbanged him in the black hole and it stopped reinforced from casting. I don't know what happened. Yeah, we know Rogue wins. Oh, uh, oh. It's like right here, I don't know what happened. Oh, okay. I just saw it in slow motion, so it makes more sense. I think he earth shattered. Reinforce got out of the way, got his Earth Shatter off, but Too Easy had already survived long enough to get the High Noon off. It's like he Earth Shattered, got a few people over here, the black hole ended, Too Easy gets the High Noon off, and then, like it was very split second. For, for that, um, so that was a very fast play. Where's my overlay? There we go. 620, pretty good time. Like two minutes a point, roughly. This map comes down to the first point so much, actually. Like the first team fight can like dictate sometimes how the map lines up going. Reinhardt going in, holding mouse one. A Winx going in, holding mouse one. That's a lot of damage as well, and that's all they needed there at the very end. Either way, though, we'll be phased now on defense. They must defend for 620, which again, it's not. It wasn't the quickest time they set, but it's also workable here on their own defense. Uh, Rogue definitely cannot rest easy. And uh, defensively for Faze... Oh, I don't know, Jimmo. So Shadowburn, a lot of times he will run a defensive reaper. He's going full on Genji here. Yeah, interesting to see Genji on defense, whereas Shadowburn was still playing... So, like, they're talking right now about Shadowburn playing Genji on defense. I think... Uh, there's not really a set meta, but I will say that TV likes to play Hanzo on this map more times than not. So, like... If you're in phase issues, you're almost expecting the Hanzo. And Genji's a pretty good counter to Hanzo because you can like get up in his face and kill him and it's pretty hard to hit headshots as Hanzo on like a close range Genji. So it's not that interesting. Like Shadowburn's probably the best Genji in the game. And if he's not, he's probably like top three. I mean, I don't know who's better than him. Maybe like, honestly, I don't know who's better than Shadowburn right now at Genji. I don't think anyone is. So. Him being on Genji is just intimidating in itself because he plays it so well that he can make it work in most situations. Um, 
Nine times out of ten, you're not going to see a defensive Genji. Like, that's not a thing. But if you have someone that's so good at a hero that they can make it work all the time, like, why not give it to them? We'll see where he positions himself as well. Um, but I think it's mostly the fact that he's so good and the fact that they know TVK's going to go Hanzo. Or they expect the Hanzo. a play that is feast or famine either to is going to get the pickoffs he's looking for right away certainly too easy will be on his menu or he doesn't get the pickoffs and rogue is going to be kneecapped so a lot on rogue to be here no to be actually swapping off from the genji not wanting to go high. man genji all built so fast like shadow burner is 25 percent all i did was like spam shurikens on a choke as well, or like actually pretty sick I mean, Reaper can't really deal with the long -range hanzo. but now tubeek switches immediately and he gets off the genji and goes his own hanzo i don't know why unko is this Oh no, that's Shadowburn. They switched the cam right there between the two Genjis and it confused the shit out of me. Too easy, I will say, Too easy played this point pretty well. Like, his positioning is very spot on. He just sits in the back here and forces them to have to deal with him. Like, right there, if you're in Zom's, not Zom's shoes, if you're in Wind's shoes, you see this Reinhardt with like half health, like dying, and you see the Zarya dying. Um,. But too easy still shooting at them, so they're gonna get trades here. But too easy just sits in the back of the point and just keeps shooting people down. Like he hasn't taken any damage, and if he has, it's been minimal. So like by him just standing in the back of this point, it kind of secures the point for them because they have to choose between shooting him and shooting like the Reinhardt and the Zarya. And that was a pretty aggressive play, but he knew that he had the positioning for it. Yeah, Shadowburn's definitely he he's just he's just calculated when he plays. Like he plays like he played Soldier in TF2. He just takes fights that he knows he can win, and that's it. He very rarely risks it with like his DM, and his DM is so good that he can play more aggressive than most Genjis because he's not afraid to miss because he knows he won't miss. Or he just doesn't think he'll miss, I guess. That was so cocky from Tvik. Like um, he knew that he didn't have flashbang though, so I guess it's not that bad. But Tvik just made a huge play there. Like, he just got a triple kill, and if he hadn't gotten that kill on Too Easy, they probably would have lost that fight. Good news for FaZe, though. They still have, they're close to Black Hole. Rogue should have had it by now. I'm surprised they don't. I think Wind's had a rough time. Um, getting it? Because Wind's was at 70% in, like, the last fight and only just getting it now. I think Reinforce missed his first search shot. That's his second... And yeah, Shadowburn's gonna have so like here's the thing, right? Like when you're playing this map, you don't really expect a Genji on defense, let alone right now on the streets phase, like immediately. So the surprise factor, it's not really a surprise factor, but the fact that you're not accustomed to seeing it is a pretty big um telling point, or it's just like a big deal. Um like Rogue have this black hole earth shatter. If they don't get Shadowburn with either like with the Earth Shatter or like a flashbang or something, like he's just gonna run rampant. It is in a pretty good spot right now though, because they're about to get uh, Black Hole. They have Dragon Blade and they have Drop the Beat. And if you pop Dragon Blade pretty early, you can like force ults out of the offense that they don't want to pop. Because like if Shadowburn goes in with the Dragon Blade and gets on your Zenyatta, like the Zenyatta kinda has to ult, or the Lucio really has to ult. Because you're not you don't really want a defensive Genji to be able to like kill one or two people. But because of the way Dragon Blade is right now, if you get it off early. It's almost too much to handle if you combo it with a drop the beat, like eight seconds with the armor and then like the health regen from like the Zenyatta orb. You don't want to get initiated on if you're on offense by a defensive Genji ulting. So it's like, it's actually really good in that sense in that even though it's a bizarre pick, it forces the offense's hand a little bit because you have to choose between dropping ults and like dying. However, if Tavik, see like right here, he's gonna pop it, it just goes in. And like now they have to pick. And you see, they like fucked up, I think. Actually, they really fucked up. I don't think they fucked up, they fucked up. Wins black holes, he like panic black holes, and Nox panic drop the beats. And like this is what I mean. They commit these alts on defense, but like you don't care if you commit two alts on defense because you're on defense. Like you don't even have to get kills on defense. The card just has to not move. So you're okay trading these two ults for like these three? I mean, Rogue shouldn't have popped them. As soon as AKM dies, you just you just accept your fate. You say, okay, they dropped the beat, 
and they dragon bladed that's fine like let's just lose the fight like what's the point in winning that fight first of all it's like such an uphill battle because you got initiated on it. whoever initiates in this game generally wins like that's a blanket statement and i don't want to make blanket statements but for the most part if you're the team that initiates with the alts you'll probably have a better time um unless like someone pops as a portal that's like better but since no team right now has transcendence it doesn't matter who pops up first because or it doesn't matter that they have who pops yeah it doesn't matter the order because the transcendence won't be there to counter so if there's no transcendence to counter your dragon blade you can like force their hand and they forced their hand and they panicked like rogue didn't have a game plan coming through this choke they had to have expected the dragon blade would be up since tv had already used his like and since shadowburn like was playing genji the entire time you have to assume that they're gonna have dragon blade and they didn't drop the beat in the last fight so to assume they have dropped the beat like rogue should know better here the initial the play that needed to happen was as soon as they see this dragon blade they just hit earth shatter and earth shatter just cancels it and kills him and then if they get the earth shatter off then they fight but reinforce is still sitting on this earth shatter so it's not going to counter this shadow burn dragon blade and now they wasted drop the beat on four players that don't even do damage so like this is a really big mistake from rogue i would say but FaZe played it pretty well, like, you pop Dragon Blade, you pop drop the beat, and suddenly there's like a fucking ulting Genji with infinite range on his sword, with speed boost, and armor, buff, and what do you do against that? Like, you die. So they forced Rogue to make a bad play, and that's all you really want to do when you're playing defense. Like, what did this drop the beat do? It actually did nothing. It, like, they wasted Black Hole and dropped the beat, now Zombs has Black Hole? And Forsaken's gonna get transcendent soon. Unko just died, you still have 50%. I'm just trying to educate the people, man. <laughs> but that was such a good switch. Okay, and I, this is a, this is even smarter too. Like he switches to this Winston. And it's Discord plus Winston on a Genji is so strong. He knows T Beak's gonna have the Dragon Blade soon. Because T Beak popped it first. So he like anticipates the fact that Tvik's gonna come in with the blade, and the best way to kill the Tvik Dragon Blade is to pop Transcendence or put a Discord orb on him, and then kill him with the Winston. So it's just it's just a really smart swap here. He like realizes that if he's playing Genji against Tvik with Dragon Blade, he can't really do anything. Shadowburn's like one step ahead right now. They're gonna use he can initiate here because they don't have anything. They just waste all their ults on that last fight. That was pretty good, actually. I thought Reinforce... Or did he even use it? Oh yeah, he did use it. Reinforce dropped his ult at the same time. But this isn't the end of the world for... Um... Phase. That was a bizarre fight. I feel like the Black Hole didn't have any follow-up damage, so they shouldn't have even popped it. Like, there was no pressure on them to pop that Black Hole, so I'm not sure that initiating with the Black Hole was good. It was a really good response from Rogue though to pop the Earth Shatter into the Dragon Blade, like they got so much value out of that. Just kidding. Okay, so the card actually didn't move. So this Winston actually pays off again because it gets back to the card and forces out Nox's ult again. This is good. They're like baiting out ults again. How'd that miss? That was bizarre to me. That wasn't bad though from FaZe because it didn't cost them much. They wasted the ult from the Reinhardt. I don't know if Fact Fiction needed to ult there. I think that was a bad ult. I don't know why he decided to Earth Shatter. Um, if they had Earth Shatter now, they'd be in a way better position. But they did bait out the drop to B from Nox, so it's not the end of the world. But this is where it comes down to ult economy, like 100%. Shadowburn switches off because Tabik switched, or Tabik uses ult. Okay, so Euros have like this different play style than the Americans, I think. Or Euros, they make mistakes, right? Like, I don't want to say any team's like making perfect plays all the time, or like perfect ult timings and shit, or like... like Rogues made their fair share of mistakes, right? And so is FaZe, to be honest, but FaZe is making this a little bit less this match. But the Euros have such good Genji players that, like, sometimes the ult advantages go out the window. 
Um, like you can talk about the alt management game and like the macro, but the micro in this game from some of the Genji players specifically is like so good. Like Shadowburn just turned that entire fight for his team. Like that looks so good for Rogue. Rogue were in such a good position. And then Shadowburn just comes out of nowhere and gets like a double kill. And two easy switches to Winston, like they just tank up. Their entire team is tanky as shit now. And they're not running a Reaper on Rogue. So they're saying like, alright, you guys aren't gonna run a Reaper. We'll just run a tank heavy strat. Uh, Shadowburn, go on your Genji because you're good at it. Like, Shadowburn playing Winston is like a waste of skill, you know? It's like when you're watching Dota and you see Dendi playing Magnus or something, and you're like, why isn't he playing Invoker? Why'd they put him on Magnus? Like, this is kind of the same thing. It's like Shadowburn's so good at Genji that he should be the one playing the DPS class. Like, put too easy on the Winston so, like, Shadowburn can style on them. Um, but that's one of the, that's like a Euro thing. Like, the American teams aren't good enough, I don't think, right now at the right classes to do this. But, um, yeah, Dendi face, no space. But you see, like, Shadowbrain isn't scared at all. Like, he's just knocked too easy back. He's, like, chasing that. He's, like, get out of my house. Like, look at Shadowbrain right here. He does not care. And it doesn't matter that FaZe have no ults right now because they have this, like, X-Factor Shadowbrain that can, like, just cause so much trouble for them. Like... Winston goes in to initiate to try to force out alts. Tavik's in the back here. And Tavik just dies to Zoms. Because, like, the deathmatch is really good. Why? What's the play here? There's a lot of mistakes here. Because Forsaken transcendenced, but his team's dead. And then. Unko like responds with the transcendence, but Tvik's dead. So if you're phased, you're pretty happy right now because all this time is like wasted from Rogue. Like they just pop transcendence, but they're not gonna get anything out of it because Tvik's dead and there's like a monkey alive. Like Zoms and Fact Fiction and Raucous together are still too tanky for Rogue to go through. Like they don't have the damage right now to kill these three heroes or four heroes rather. So at no point in time is FaZe really worried about losing, but the fact that they get Unko to pop this ult and not really get anything out of it is super good for them. Like Rogue really needs a Reaper. Like they're playing against Zarya, Winston, and Reinhardt, and they don't have like a Rodog or a Reaper. Like Tvik's okay if he has Dragon Blade, but he hasn't gotten a good Dragon Blade off in like three fights. Like he's had this Dragon Blade for a while, hasn't gotten it off. And they don't have the damage to burst through these heroes. So, like, FaZe is just feeling fine right now. Like, it doesn't matter if they lose this fight. Although, Fact Fiction is a good shatter there, but it, it wasn't worth it. That was Actually, it wasn't a good shatter at all, I lied. FaZe is okay, though, right now, because they're going to spawn with Raucous and the Black Hole. Like, the Black Hole Dragon Blade combo should be enough. Um... Oh, Shadow Burn. Shadow Burn, Jesus, man. Look at him, dude. He dies, actually. This go to three maps? Oh my god, I'm so dumb. I thought FaZe won this map. But that was a good play from them. I mean, I thought the Black Hole would do more, but they couldn't make it work. But that Earth Shatter actually was really bad. Um, the Earth Shatter in the fight before that, because he didn't have it for that last hold. If he had the Earth Shatter there on top of the Black Hole, they probably could have made that work. But since he blew it, he didn't have it. Um, but yeah, the Earth Shatter would have probably made the difference there. So, I mean, mistake from Fact Fiction, it happens.